Leslie Spate. She had three saves, including a big one, laid off a penalty corner on Friday versus Michigan to help propel Iowa onto the championship matchup. The very experienced Sarah Holiday, 246 saves. That's fifth all time in Terrapin history. Look at her fine work this year. Fifth in the Big Ten. That save percentage just over 70%. Iowa wearing the black and gold. Six seeded Iowa Hawkeyes versus the number one seed, Maryland Terrapins. And off they go. This is a Maryland team that scored nine goals Friday versus Ohio State. Ohio State had not allowed more than three until that game. So a very intimidating semifinal performance for Maryland. Starting lineups are presented by Discover. Isabel Brown there, Madison McGuire down with the block tackle. Some early possession from the Hawkeyes. Stribos to Ellie Holly right up the middle. As Holly was the X factor, according to her head coach, Lisa Salucci, in that win over Michigan on Friday. Native of Bristol, England, Holly. There she is causing some issues for Maryland. She has that great anticipation, Kara, Ellie Holly. Yeah, speaking with her at yesterday's practice, it was interesting to learn that she started playing the sport at four years old. So of all players on the field, she perhaps has the most knowledge. Here's Maryland. First time towards goal. Keeping it safely away from that circle, Iowa, but danger is still lurking. Sabrina Rhodes does a great job here with getting behind the defense and you just notice quick passing coming from Maryland. Watch the regular season matchup and I think Hannah Bond was certainly a role player for the Terps. Is there a particular area of the field where you think this game is going to be decided today? Well, I think it's execution in the final third, and that's on the defensive side of things as well as the offensive side of things. Take, for example, this situation right here. Maryland's second time getting a circle penetration with just about two minutes gone in the game. Saw a foul there that they did not have called in their favor, so they're asking the officials to take a look at this. A refresher of the video referral rules. Each team has a video referral. Only plays that happen inside the 25 yard line can be under review. And just notice that it's only two minutes down for a video review. So it's really important for Maryland if this is upheld for them because that's a remainder of the game that you will not have your video review. See uh, Sabrina Rhodes around the ball and about three Iowa defenders inside the circle. The starts have been critical for Iowa. That's something that's been plaguing them this year. But Coach Salucci was very happy how they busted out of the gates Friday against Michigan and put them on their heels. Take a look back at the circle entry coming from B.B. Donrat, and you see her immediately put her hand up in the air. So there may have even been two foot fouls, one maybe coming from 11 and gold right there. It's kind of hard to see from that viewpoint though don't see it head on as to whether it hit her foot and the ball's a little bouncy anyway and then it almost looks like it may have hit the foot of Sophie Sunderland there as well just look for a little misdirection once it's bounced off the foot that's quick footwork though to be honest <laughs> coming from <laughs> Sunderland trying to dodge it yeah and a hot start and a high tempo start is important for both teams Iowa really has worked hard on starting the tempo and intensity out high and speaking with some of the midfielders yesterday, Sophie Sunderland, one of them, how the team attacks the first five to 10 minutes is going to be huge. 
See the officials now pulling the coaches together to to explain the result, and they are finding the video is inconclusive. So Iowa, or excuse me, Maryland keeps their video referral, but not the corner opportunity that they were hoping for. And you can see why it was inconclusive. It was tough to detect there. Odile Coyce, she's so fierce and intense, even in training yesterday and in games, Coach Maharg says she's just always like that. Her communication on the field has improved. Something that's so important as she becomes more experienced with this Maryland team. She had a great matchup going against Ellie Hawley in their regular season game in Iowa City. Odile Coase was without her teammate, Nick. Nika Loren, so she definitely had to do a lot of running around and marking on the defensive end of things. Dressed for the weather, Coach Lisa Salucci. It's still windy. The rain has subsided for the most part. And they're stretching McKenna Grew. She opened up the goal scoring, did the San Diego native on Friday afternoon. Katie Birch, they call her Birchy, number 11. It was just interesting talking to McKenna Grew and her parents yesterday, Kara. She didn't pick up field hockey until a couple of days before high school. That's a little late. Well, I think if you look at certain regions in the country, Southern California, I think that's pretty standard. And there are a lot of athletes that have the capability to play soccer as well in the opposite season, so it really provides them a unique opportunity to continue a lot of sports through high school. McKenna's smart. She didn't want to play cross country and run, so she'd rather run with a stick in her hand. Now playing for a Big Ten Tournament Championship in her senior year. Take a glance now at our Bayer keys to the game. Pay particular attention to Megan Conroy marking Nika Lorenz, who see number five in gold. And just to touch up again on the keys to the game, Iowa starting the game with a high tempo and be able to sustain it for about the first 10 minutes. Maryland execution the final third defensively and offensively. They played great defense against Iowa in October. Their marking was tight and they played them very physically, so they really need to up hold their defensive effort. Nineteenth all-time meeting between these two teams. Ten of the last thirteen have been decided by one goal, and as Kara touched upon, their regular season meeting was just a one-goal game. I can remember talking to Coach Missy Maharg at halftime. Without Sarah Holiday, she thought they would be out of the game after 35 minutes. So it was Holiday really helping out her leg-weary teammates that day. Her sister, of course, on Iowa's team. So there's a little, there's a little bit of bragging rights there between the two. Explosive inside the circle is able to receive it, gets a shot off very quickly. Her success against Iowa continuing to prove itself. She scored off a beautiful deflection back on October 14th. Did Madison McGuire in here? She bangs the back of the boards for that first goal. Now I do see the officials over by the side table reviewing the goal. Was the officials are using 
using their own video referral. We apologize for the technical difficulties here. It's Maryland with the early lead, Madison McGuire, but right now under a video referral. Second video referral we've seen already in this game. Only six minutes in. And I think where that proves to be difficult is so much of time. You've warmed up. You know, the conditions are very adverse today. It's windy. The rain has up. You see a lot of players out in the field with long sleeves. So it's important that you keep yourself warmed up. You keep legs warm. Mentally as well as physically, a like today after a long grind championship weekend. Still awaiting a decision here right to this video refer the second one of the game. Players trying to stay focused and warmed up here in the six minutes. And it's a goal for the University of Maryland. It will stay Hopefully, from Iowa's perspective, old habits are coming back and start slow. Maryland sneaks in that first goal for Madison McGuire. Just again, going back to the point about the importance of either team starting off aggressive. A lot of quality circle penetrations for Maryland. Able to get a lot of great looks on net. There's Hannah Bond out of the back for the University of Maryland. Ellie Holly trying to recover possession. Holly's parents you know, have made the long trip over the ocean. They encouraged her to start playing field hockey care, as you mentioned, when she was four years old because they had to get her out of the house. A little too much energy as a four-year-old back then, and using that energy now to Iowa's advantage. It's Maya Christopher. Have a lot of numbers and bodies in the ball. Everybody is making sure that those passing lanes and spaces behind the defense is covered. Bond once again reaching back. Brooke Burdine to accept that pass. A lot of pressure coming on that press too. Iowa trying to maintain and sustain the ball sideline. Talking to some of the Hawkeyes today, their mindset right now facing this Maryland beat them 10 straight times is there's no need to be intimidated. They believe. And that belief started early, right out of the gates. And all turning players spent their summers in Iowa City. And that confidence and chemistry in one another really started to come together. Yeah, that commitment this Iowa started on October first when they were eliminated from the Big Ten tournament against Penn State. I think it says a lot about a team when they all take it upon them to commit their time in the offseason to train together. That's a big difference when you look at the final product on the field. Conroy in Iowa trying to penetrate the circle after conceding the first goal here in the championship game for a Big Ten tournament title on the Northwestern campus. Sarah Holiday just had a phenomenal performance in the regular season matchup as well, especially in the second half when she faced a lot of heat coming from the Hawkeyes. Ellie Holly. That's tipped by Murphy. For a while, it looked like Iowa thought it had snuck between the legs of Sarah Holiday, but it stays out. And this is where Ellie Holly becomes a bigger threat. When she comes up with the ball, she's able to get a shot off as soon as she is entering the circle right inside the line. So you have, have seen her taken a wind up a couple of times now with those turnovers in the backfield. As you're enjoying this 
championship matchup. We apologize for the technical difficulties. You hear the wind whipping here on the shores of Lake Michigan. Coase, so composed with pressure coming at her. Madison McGuire. Weaving her way in, Nika Lorenz. That cross dealt with by Iowa. Tapped out of the circle. A new free hit coming out for Iowa. Maryland UC there was a little disgruntled without a corner call. Lorenz gets a nicely off the reverse. Lucas Stribos, the best 1v1 defender on this Iowa team, according to her head coach, Lisa Salucci, gets a stop. Bebe Donrat, the defending there, Katie Birch. Linnea Gonzalez, 14 goals on the season, second most in the conference for number 10 for Maryland. Big 10 player of the year for Gonzalez. Selected to the first team all Big 10 last year. Started her career off on a very high note, winning Big 10 freshman of the year. And Gonzalez is all Maryland and was actually a ball girl for the Maryland field hockey team when she was younger. And idolized Katie O'Donnell, that's Maryland's leading scorer, now goes by Katie Bam and an assistant coach on the Maryland team. Ellie Holly leads the charge the other way for the Hawkeyes. Unable to connect with Maddie Murphy. But the reaction from Iowa was saying that, yeah, we're not going to lie. It was stressful facing four straight penalty corners to finish off that game versus Michigan. But they believe this is the year of the hockey Hawkeyes. Take a lot of pride in what their defensive corner units can do, calling themselves a the great wall of Iowa. Well, I think what's even more impressive about the defensive standoff against Michigan, two of those corners were with time expired. Certainly a lot of pressure and stress on the situation. Katie Birch. Defending from Riley Donnelly for Maryland. Still without a penalty corner. Sunderland. Pushed away by Nika Lorenz. Searching for it, Kelly LePage. Maryland is not giving Iowa any time in this circle. They're getting those free balls and those loose balls and outletting it immediately. Sunderland reaching in there with a jab. Maryland pinned a little bit in this near corner. McGuire looking to escape. This is just the second time Madison McGuire playing her sister, McKenna McGuire. The first matchup was that regular season duel back in mid-October. Yeah. Ellie Holly trying to get position. Rolls it into the circle, quickly stabbed out by Hannah Bond. That was an area of the game where Ellie Holly really exceeded. And their regular season matchup was taking those free hits quickly just inside the 25. She has an ability to create a workspace, a workspace for herself at the top of the circle. Stribos. Along with Anta Nizel, so much size and length on the defensive side of the field for the University of Iowa. McGuire's goal continues to stand up. Last conference title coming in in 2008 for Iowa. Nice job, 
using the width of the field here, the Terrapins. Just two losses on the season for Maryland to Virginia and Penn State. Ottenizel stepping up very nicely against Sabrina Rhodes. A couple key takeaways for number six in gold. Holly. This will come out. Seemed to be an obstruction call against Iowa's attack. So settling her way into this opening half, almost 15 minutes old. Riley Donnelly. Coase. Sophie Sunderland, they call her Sunny, number 20 for Iowa. Maryland's whole entire team is behind the ball. Not much on for Iowa in regards to passing lanes. Harris Gonzalez getting down to the ground to defend. Megan Conroy is impressive with her speed at that left outside mid position who was just over the ball. I think that was one thing that I took notice to at yesterday's practice, especially on the press and when they transfer fields. LePage. Gonzalez, Lizzie DeSoy will push wide. Madison McGuire now on the right. Was looking for the stick there of Gonzalez, but taken back over by Iowa. Grew was ahead of the play. Coase is back. Expected a low scoring game between these two teams so good defensively. Seems to be trending that way. Conroy. Maya Christopher trying to sneak her way in. You can see how well she likes to attack coming from that baseline. Fresh legs too coming off from a short time off the field, giving Iowa's offense a little spark. It's great marking there by Riley Donnelly. You see number 22 in red. A youthful backfield for Maryland. Donnelly only a freshman. It's great ball transfer. They got it from Sideline to sideline, really trying to expose Iowa's midfield. This is to Burdine. Back tackling pressure coming from Iowa. Sunderland there with reckless abandon trying to break things up and anticipate. Going to see a lot of physical play today coming from both teams. Especially in the center of the field. These are midfielders for Iowa that play you tight and certainly let you know of their presence. The scary thing is, is that Coach Missy Maharg, the head coach for Maryland, th thinks that this group hasn't reached its full potential yet. They've been challenged, and if you're one of the top teams in the nation, you will have a huge target on your back and you will get the best of every single team that you play that really prepares you for the NCAA tournament. Winner of this tournament, automatic bid. Well, each team with one shot still searching for their first penalty corner. Madison McGuire has the opening goal. Top seed has the first goal in this championship matchup. Well, there's a proud papa, Mike McGuire. His daughter, McKenna, is a senior playing field hockey for Iowa on the right. And on the left, it's the goal scorer, the junior, 
Madison McGuire, so he's a little torn about who to root for this afternoon, I'm sure. Sporting those black and gold candy stripe pants. Standing at the 50 yard line, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got a 50 50 shot that one of his daughters is going to win today. There's the full wardrobe for Mike McGuire watching his two daughters go at it here for a Big Ten tournament title. This is Maddie Murphy, 10 points in her last six games. Christopher trying to shirk loose. First penalty quarter on the way, and it's going to go to Iowa. You would expect Iowa just to come at you very hard. That's what Maddie Murphy does from the outside of the circle. Looking for her teammate, Maya Christopher, who is marked brilliantly by Hannah Bond, number 18 for Maryland. But when she was approaching the ball, it seemed that it grazed her foot. They earned eight penalty corners versus Maryland in their mid-October regular season matchup. This is their first one today. And the only goal of the game came off of a corner opportunity. Searching for the tying goal here. I believe Hannah Bond went out too early from the baseline, so they're actually sending a defender back to the 50-yard line. This really gives Iowa a unique chance. Three defenders for Maryland inside the net. Again to Ellie Holly. Holly straight away. That deflects wide. Looking to connect off of that post and Maddie Murphy, the inserter, but she got her stick down about one second too late. See how quickly Lorenz is able to get out there. What a great view of what the goalies have in front of them on those corner defensive units. And you can see the distress coming from the Hawkeye bench. See just how close that was to connecting. Yeah, you know that this Iowa team, just with how creative and successful they can be on corners, that they've really drafted up quality ones coming into this matchup at this point in the season, as teams are entering the postseason. You have to be able to improvise and create new offensive looks. Nika Lorenz back on the field there for Maryland. You know, I've talked a lot about Stribos and her 1v1 defensive skills, but also her ability to take people 1v1 while possessing the ball is quite impressive. She gets inside the 25, she has an ability to find that cross ball. Lorenz had the hat trick on Friday. Here is Murphy with the shot. Holiday kicks it aside. The strategy from Iowa going into this game was gonna try to mark out Nika Lorenz and just eliminate her, something that Michigan did pretty well in the regular season as we look at that try from Iowa. Great movement coming from Maddie Murphy. You see how she gets in, in front of Donnelly at the last second and tries to get something directed toward net. Murphy is a tireless worker. 13 goals on the season, including four game winners for Maddie Murphy. Maryland. They just average a little over six penalty corners a game, Kara, but you think maybe that's because they score so much from the run of play. And I, They score a lot of goals from the field of play, but I think their conversion rate in the later part of the season is great. 23 of their 115 corners are goals they have scored off of corners. Matty Murphy taking the wide channel, a lot of cover back though, and it's Hannah Bond on the takeaway for the Terrapins. Well, 
Well, big field hockey. Welcome to those of you enjoying soccer. This is for a Big Ten tournament title, Campus of Northwestern, Lakeside Field. I'm Dan Kelly. Next to Kara Lentz, it's Madison McGuire in Maryland off to a bright start, leading this championship game 1-0. And Nico Lorenz leading this offense, getting quality looks inside the circle and drawing Maryland a corner. So we talked about at the top of the broadcast how well Nico Lorenz was able to find the back of the boards on corners against Ohio State. Two of her three goals scored off of corners. It'll be interesting to see how she's utilized, whether she's going to go in toward the net or she'll hang back on the perimeter of the circle. Number Lorenz had a red. hat trick on Friday by this time of the game. Nika Lorenz pushes it over there. Gonzalez. Good defending coming there from Anta Nizel. And Maryland will just keep you guessing. You saw Lorenz there positioned at that short corner. Trying to find a pass to Gonzalez on the opposite side. Anta Nizel, what a great takeaway from number six. Those long passes at the top of the circle are very hard to read because you have to cover and cut down space in a short amount of time. Six and 14, Nizel and Stribos, their wingspan, they can block most of that backfield. Approaching the final 10 minutes of this first half. Lorenz there, defensively supported by B.B. Donrat. So Missy Maharg chuckling a few moments ago. You can do that when you've won so much. And she's in the midst of her 31st season at the helm of the University of Maryland. And they've qualified for the NCAA tournament a mind-boggling 28 times. This year will be number 29 and just what they're able to do in conference as well. Maryland only joining the Big Ten back in 2014. But if you look at their history, when they were part of the ACC combined, this is their 29th tournament final appearance. Speaking of the ACC, the Big Ten has been catching up, Carrie. You think five teams could qualify for the tournament coming out of the Big Ten conference? Yeah, I think that's certainly a possibility. Penn State, perhaps the at-large bid. Iowa's in, Maryland's in, Michigan is in. So Penn State really sitting there on the outside. But you know, we've had some great insight. I think that Penn State will be able to compete for that national title the weekend before Thanksgiving in Louisville. Maryland has had a lot of success in the NCAA tournament in the regular season, but the Big Ten tournament, they've made it to the finals a lot, but they've only won it once in 2015. Of course, new members to the conference, but accustomed to them winning the big game usually, but that hasn't always been the case in tournament play. Maryland also in a great position to host the first round of the tournament, which of course is a position you want to be in. That first round also happening on Friday and Sunday format compared to years past where they were back-to-back -back games on Saturday and Sunday. Iowa out shooting Maryland 3-1, yet they trail 1-0. Maryland's defense is doing a great job with limiting the touches for Iowa and making it extremely difficult for the Hawkeyes to get circle penetrations. And that's the perspective from Missy Maharg, Maryland's head coach, is you want to focus on yourselves. And it's really a fine line, she feels, in terms of scouting the other teams. You don't want to get too wrapped up about what they do. Just concentrate on what Maryland does well. And also, I love how head coach Missy Maharg is able to scout team she more or less looks at characters and characteristics of the team a very big big picture approach surrounded by a stellar coaching staff racing after it here lizzie desoy unable to catch up to it provides such a spark coming off the bench for maryland really started to gain a lot more playing time the last half of the season. Let's go, seven minutes. 
Harams off of Nika Lorenz. Ellie Holly will push forward for Iowa. Good timing by Coast. Deciding when to come up for the ball. Great connecting pass to her outside mid too. And to Birdine can just blow past anybody. She's crafty. And speedy as Kara pointed out. Well, it's not just her acceleration and her speed, but she takes very tiny steps to break down her speed, to What's cut a turn. Linnea Gonzalez, the reverse chip from far away, bounding wide. To Burdine right there, tightly marked by Conroy, but she was sitting at that stroke mark, salivating for that ball. So calm, under control here, Maryland. I really like to see Kelly LePage in the center of the field, just due to personnel. She's been moved to that central position the last third of the season. Naturally plays it for the U.S. team, U21 team. It's been a great leader for the Maryland team, not just this season, but across her full time at Maryland. She really embodies what the Terp student athlete is all about. And it's a great compliment coming from your coach when they compliment and commend your off-field behavior and how you interact with your teammates and how you set yourself as an example. Kara Weather is part of the plot today. Breezes gusting above 20 miles per hour at times. And some rain, but you reminded me before the game, this isn't soccer. The ball's a little heavier, so it doesn't affect the, the ball flight. I think windy conditions make it difficult to hear your teammates on the field and to hear your coaches from the sideline. But again, this is just another element and a factor that you can't control. You know, Lakeside Field is more like the lake effect field today. <laughs> I think they're not kicking field goals. <laughs> they're playing for a championship. Maryland trying to add to their lead. Gonzalez unable to get the stick to it. With the second wave there for Maryland. Brooke to Burdine grabbing back possession. Yeah, just look at the defensive commitment coming from Conroy. Great footwork, great body positioning. Every ball in possession will have to be fought for. Maya Christopher driving the getaway car the other way for Iowa. Maddie Murphy unable to spot the stick of Nikki Freeman, and it's Bond taking back over for Maryland. Lorenz doing a great job with getting back and dropping on that defense. Iowa has a tendency to just explode and come at you hard, but they're really attacking the center of the field. They are trying to enter the circle right smack in the middle. LePage. Sabrina Rhodes trying to navigate her way around onto Nizel. Good pass there by Gonzalez reaching for it was an erratic Hannah Bond. Her head coach, Missy Mahar, calls her an incredible competitor. And I think a lot of that is noticed off the ball and behind the ball. And the staple that she is for the defensive unit. You can almost hear it, Kara. The intensity has seemed to pick up the last five, seven minutes. Approaching the final three minutes of the first half. Isabel Brown runs into a roadblock. Maryland's forwards are doing an excellent job with back tackling and really putting the midfielders for Iowa under pressure. Nizel to Sunderland. Sunderland is all the way out to the side of the midfield. Of course, Iowa wants to try to attack through their key players in the center of the field. Katie Birch, one of those, number 11 in gold.
Welcome back. Second half about to get underway between Maryland and Iowa. Madison McGuire and the Terrapins on top. one nothing. We apologize for technical difficulties on this windy, rainy Sunday in the shores of Lake Michigan. Northwestern campus, the scene of this Big Ten tournament championship and the semifinals this past Friday as Iowa huddles together for warmth and strategy to try to figure out how to break down this Maryland team, which at times seemed impossible in the first 35 minutes, Kara. Similar story, too, to their regular season meeting. Maryland took a one-goal lead into the second half, but Iowa really poured on the shots and the energy in the second half. Maryland's defense just doing a phenomenal job. The team defense, they have every single player behind the ball. There isn't much for Iowa to give when they're looking to generate their attack. Maryland earned 10 penalty corners in their victory over Ohio State Friday, including six in the opening half. Just one earned there in the first half from the Terrapins, just like the Hawkeyes. This is an Iowa team that refocused after that loss last year in late October to Penn State, and they've been focused on their goals and getting better every day, and they have been. And a lot of people are picking them to win this championship game, but here they find themselves down, one nothing to Maryland. To Burdine. Ribos and Nizel out of the back for Iowa. BB Donrad in there probing for the Terrapins. Iowa is not a team to have turnovers when they're trying to outlet the ball, especially coming from Nizel. Lizzie Desoy had a great approach there on that press, coming away with a turnover. Hannah Bond, they're off the foot of Ellie Holly, so we'll stay with Bond in Maryland. It was great talking with both Bodil Coase and Nika Lorenz yesterday after practice about the role that Lorenz played while she was out with an injury, and she worked very closely with Coase about her passing and her outlet passing and the different levels to which she passed and the success rate. Level one being the screen in front, level two being the outside mid, level three being the four, that's about a level two pass. And she got some great feedback about her success rate with passing it up to the screen, which in turn has given her a lot of confidence to make that pass more often. So still in the first few minutes here of the second half, Iowa has to step out sooner on the defensive end of things. Bond meanders her way towards goal. Penalty corner upcoming for Maryland. Their second one of the afternoon. Leslie Spate getting a lot of reps yesterday to prepare for the drag flick that Maryland can throw at you from two different players, Coase and Lorenz. Katie Birch, who plays at that post position, also got a lot of reps with the coaching staff and Spate. Two batteries set up at the top of the circle, Gonzalez and Coase posing as strikers. B.B. Donner at the inserter. Trying to make it 2-0 for Maryland. Nika Lorenz there looking for a deflection in front. Donnelly right there off the post. Lorenz reads the situation and Iowa did a great job here with anticipating the pass going to the left side and said Lorenz keeps it. And Desoy was also available right there by the stroke mark. So you can see that insert ball for the Terps going directly up to Lorenz. 
at that L1. First shot in 35 minutes for Maryland. Lizzie Desoy has some company on the sidelines today cheering her on. And her sister Anna Desoy in attendance. Great career at Maryland. To Burdine. Gonzalez trouble initially accepting that pass and then turns it over. Ellie Holly driving the other way for Iowa. Murphy to her left. Spreading the ball around. This is Megan Conroy now filtering back to the midfield. You can see Maryland is not putting pressure on Stribos at that left back position. Instead, just taking away those passing lanes. Great approach here coming from McGuire as well. Stribos, this is Katie Birch into the circle. The cross coming, deflected around, and somehow just shoving it wide there on the doorstep. Maya Christopher. Well, if you remember, Iowa's goal against Michigan on Friday, same type of situation. Katie Birch takes the ball to her. Just looking for her deflection. I think if Maya Christopher could hope for anything is to have another chance to put that one away. Ooh, Coase almost a dangerous turnover, but she was able to give it away and then stop Ellie Holly. Well, you predicted we'd see more excitement and more penalty corners, and so far that's been the case here to start off the second half. Nizel tightly marked by Desoy before she even receives the ball. I see Nizel stepping up in the midfield sooner. She's getting very, very high on those intercept attempts. It's getting fierce. Gonzalez and Holly going down to the turf. Yeah, they're really going at it too. That's fun. So can Iowa find their way into the circle for that tying goal? And prevent Maryland from more. The team that scored nine on Friday. Maya Christopher there with that most recent chance in front. See Maryland marking very tightly on Murphy, but Christopher was wide open at that opposite post. And it's quite remarkable that that ball is even able to reach Christopher in that opposite post. There's B.B. Donrat, the reverse chip, make it two nothing for Maryland. Donrat, the Big Ten freshman of the year, has really come along in the later part of the season. She really has a hot stick right now. Outlet pass for Maryland in transition. Great passing between Gonzalez and Donrat, who just touches it once, gets it on her reverse, and is able to find that opposite post. Saw Madison McGuire right there in front of Spate, but ready for the deflection or even a rebound. She came close to getting her stick on it there, yeah. Madison McGuire. So now Iowa really has their backs against the wall, and this is what Maryland can do. They can just control the entire game when they have such a great lead like this. They will continue to push. Coase, so accurate with her passing there for Hannah Bond. They're off the foot of Madison McGuire. We'll still go back to the Hawkeyes. Getting a little chippy here in the midfield, too. These two teams like to talk to one another on the field, too, especially yeah. an important game like this. Especially in the midfield, too. These opponents are quite familiar with each other, and I think they match each other's intensity. You see Bond actually holding the stick, or an arm of Birch. Maybe their last meeting, Katie Birch was issued a yellow card with about 11 and a half minutes. She came in pretty hard on a tackle. McKenna Grew unable to accept that pass out wide for Iowa. 
Iowa needs to create some turnovers in Maryland's backfield if they want to be able to put themselves in a situation to get on the scoreboard. Odile Coase broke that press very nicely, finding her teammate on the inside in Lorenz. Look at Lorenz, this guides it forward. McGuire, this is Brooke to Burdine racing that ball down. Yeah, Maryland doing a fair share of playing majority of the game inside their offensive 25. Look how easily they're getting inside the 25 too. It's by one or two passes. Iowa's leaving the middle of the field really open for Maryland to penetrate. This is like night and day, Kara, from watching the regular season matchup between these two teams. Yeah, Maryland won the game, but Iowa played better on that day. You know, that was a stretch of tough road games for Maryland. If you look at their October schedule, played at home against Rutgers that same weekend on the road against Penn State, their first loss of the season. Then the following weekend going into Indiana and driving up to Iowa. I mean, that is just tough. That is Big Ten battle. And they're battle tested. Here's Maddie Murphy pushing to McKenna Grew. Bearing down on that circle, McKenna Grew and Iowa looking for a shot. Now it's Nikki Freeman off a of foot in a penalty corner on the way. I was going to say Freeman should have shot that ball sooner, but she was really just looking to pull that corner and create the foul. They have to make every possession inside the circle precious. So Iowa down 2 nothing here in the second half. Just listen to Sarah Holiday communicating with her defense on these corner sets. She's extremely communicative. Second penalty corner today for Iowa, looking for the first goal. Nizel, that was going wide, but still stopped anyway. And another penalty corner. Well, the call of, on the field off of that corner, it was a whistle, but I thought that was a free hit for Maryland coming out. You see some of the coaches irate on the sideline. So it's unclear to me where the infraction was, but maybe the officials communicating to each other from the opposite ends of the field. So the ball is saying the backside of the stick for Iowa. So it would be a free hit for Maryland coming out, but you see the official is diagonally across the field from her other official. And I think Maybe something that happened there. Katie Birch deflected in, and Iowa's on the board. They've cut the deficit in half. A belter from Katie Birch off the penalty corner. Big key for Iowa this season has been to finish. And this is a team that started to finish in the game against Penn State. One of the areas where you have to cash in on are your corner offensive opportunities. And you see Katie Birch right there. Think about this, this is a very hard skill to pull off, to get a little bit of a bounce on it, because that makes it harder for the goalkeeper to stop. But you angle your stick in when Katie Birch steps up to sweep that ball. She's changing the position of her stick to get that little raise on the ball. And that finds itself underneath Sarah Holiday. Just snuck by Holiday. She got a piece of it. It's amazing how goals can energize teams. And Iowa hoping this energy continues to build. I mean, if you look at their regular season matchup, it was a tie game for a majority of the second half. I think you get the same impression here. Yeah, the rain falling hard here along with the stiff breezes. Bond recovers possession, BB Donrat and Maryland marching up the field. You know, with the chatter and the conversations that happen on the field, I think one thing that Maryland can really try to pick apart is the emotional part of the game because Iowa can get really wrapped up in it and emotional. 
Maryland, meanwhile, is a very level-headed team, so they want to try to work that in their favor. Bond back for Coase. There's Nika Lorenz. Great take, too. Let's it come across her whole body, opens it up, and dishes it out to the outside. Donrat, Sabrina Rhodes there, kept at bay. Iowa has to be very careful with their possessions coming out of the backfield on those outlets. A little over 22 minutes to go in this championship game, at least regulation. It was a resilient performance by Iowa in their semifinal victory over Michigan on Friday, and they're going to need some of that late grit here. Maryland going the other way. Quickly, too. Kelly LePage gives and goes. Nizel and Strybos just not connecting with one another. Well, Donrat putting a lot of pressure on Nizel, trying to cause that turnover, even a bad pass. She does so successfully. You can see the rain really start to pour down. This is when it gets fun. <laughs> Makes it a little more challenging to perhaps find that equalizer if you're Iowa. Well, I think one of the benefits of the rain during a game is that it does keep the turf wet. It's a water-based turf, as is all of college field hockey. So. This helps ensure that the turf stays wet throughout the course of the game. Bibi Donrat, she's the spark plug for Maryland. She has one of their goals this afternoon is Coach Salucci encouraging her team late. Great reception coming from Freeman on the outside. LePage, the defending for the Terrapins. It's Iowa trying to barge their way into the circle. And this is where Iowa was really successful in the second half, even though they weren't able to get a goal, was taking the free hits inside the dash mark quickly. Too quick for Maryland to set up on their defense. And talking with head coach Lisa Salucci, she mentioned the importance of the attacking free hits, but more particularly inside that 25-yard line. Here's the pressure and the press coming from Iowa. And the opportunity sent wide. Turnovers don't happen very often in the backfield for Maryland. It was Leah Zellner with the look. Yeah, what a great steal. And just wide of the goal cage. Looks like Coase almost tried to lay a stop on that as well. Woo! Tight. Hannah Bond there, directing now for the Terrapins. That deflected up and hit Sunderland, so back to Maryland. Good low block tackles for Iowa, just hit the perimeter of the circle. They're very diligent with their block tackling. Spend a lot of time on their individual defensive work. So a couple of missed opportunities for Iowa in the second half, or this easily could be a 2-2 game, Rhodes on the steal. Good cover by Nizel. Maryland effective on the press. We saw Rhodes right there just putting the outside backs under a lot of pressure. Pressure coming here. Riley Miller waiting to accept that pass. Be a free hit just inside the 25. It was a play on situation until Maryland touched it. Rain falling hard here. Iowa looking to tie it. Katie Birch has their lone goal, and there she couldn't get it by Odile Coase. See some sticks flying, too. Can give you an impression of just how slippery the conditions are, where that most affects it is the grip on your stick. You said most players are using something called chamois grips today? Yeah, it's a, it's a certain grip that you can wrap around your normal grip that absorbs water and 
lets you grip the stick better. Also makes your grip thicker, which some players prefer anyway. See Birch fighting the weather and the wind here. And this is a, a deeper Maryland team. So that's why Iowa, they seem to excel on games that are televised. They take full advantage of those commercial <laughs> timeouts. But right now, it's Maryland leading 2-1. The number one seed living up to their billing, but Iowa proving here in the second half they're not going to go away easily. Birch gets a goal, and they've come knocking a few other times. Well, it's Madison versus McKenna. The McGuire family going at it and proud. Father Mike McGuire in the middle. And right now it's Madison in the lead over her sister McKenna, 2-1. And Madison's got the all-important first goal of this contest. Just the second time the sisters have competed collegiately. And this one's for a Big Ten tournament title. A lot on the line this afternoon. Teams dealing with the conditions well. Could Iowa sneak another goal by Sarah Holliday? They had two missed opportunities earlier in this half, but Birch has struck for their first goal. Katie Birch. Back pressure coming there from Gonzalez. A couple turnovers for Maryland in the midfield. Iowa is immediately there with their defensive stand. Sunderland strolling forward. She'll peel wide. Not able to penetrate the circle. Nizel, this is Stribos. Watched by Donrat. Hawkeyes have three penalty corners on the afternoon. Maryland looking for their 11th straight win versus the Hawkeyes. Lifted ahead, Brooke DeBurdine by Nizel. Here's Madison McGuire with some space in front. McGuire racing into the circle. And a little disagreement here with the call. Yeah, both teams do have their video referral. Two times that the game has gone to the video review that was inconclusive. So both teams have the exercise to use a referral for the remainder of this game. You see Iowa immediately motioning to the official to look at this. I'm not sure where the infraction happened. It may have been the back of a stick, but it actually goes off of Sunderland's hand. Originally, it did look like a foot, but upon this closer review, it just goes underneath her, her hand, and it's pretty clear to me that it didn't hit her foot. So the call on the field is a corner for Maryland, and this should be overturned. This is why you have the video referral. Great coverage, too, by Sunderland. She knew that McGuire was thinking about flipping her and going toward the inside, but just comes really down low with her hand and protecting her feet. I think that's important for Iowa's defense inside the circle is protecting your feet, and that's 
that's pretty hard to pull off when you have a lot of speed coming at you. And the hand they determined to be part of a stick, correct? Correct. Third video referral utilized this afternoon. The first one of the second half. I mean, if you think about just how big these decisions are, this this is huge. If the call is overturned on the field, Maryland just had a pretty unique opportunity on a corner to, to break open their lead to two goals. And I think ultimately what some of these calls do is end momentum for either team. The decision is upcoming. And now the explanation to both coaches. It did not hit the foot as we saw in that replay. McGuire just getting so many quality touches inside the circle. This is a player who I saw really come along in the NCAA tournament. Certainly a standout at last year's title run, making it all the way to the final. So back to live action with under 15 minutes to go. Coase drives forward, so Maryland looked like they were going to have an opportunity to add to their lead thanks to a penalty corner, but after a video referral, overruled. But back on the attack, Gonzalez fights her way into the circle and skids out. But a penalty corner. Now back for the Terrapins. Well, I just like the way that this play generated itself from Lorenz dropping into the backfield and really pushing some of those outside mids and backs up. Gonzalez goes down hard to the turf, finds the foul. Great work. The way Maryland's playing, you'd think if they could make this a two-goal game, that it might be an insurmountable lead for Iowa to overcome in conditions like this today. Third penalty corner today for the Terrapins. Coast the drag flick, deflected and also defended by Iowa. Great defensive save coming from Nizel. Position to the left of her goalkeeper in Spain just swats that one away. I mean, Iowa's corner defense, as we saw in that Michigan game, Michigan game, has really been tested in this tournament, and they've proved themselves. Izell just swatted that ball away like a bothersome fly coming towards her goal. <laughs> Donnelly, patiently back for Bodil Coase. And Hannah Bond is receiving that ball all the way at the dash. Take a look back at that save. You see Lorenz actually comes in that time at the stroke mark, gets a touch on it. Felt like that ball was going in, but Nizel, not only the reaction to stop it, but also to hit it away to the left side of the circle, away from danger. There's a reason she's at that post position. Sunderland, head up, checking her options. First thing Iowa needs to do is get that ball closer to the circle here. Easier said than done facing this dominant Maryland team. Brown 
Deflected into the circle. Bond keeping Maddie Murphy away from that. As Murphy, which is lurking from a quiet area, trying to grab possession back in the circle. Shot 7-4, advantage Iowa, but trailing 2-1 here late in the championship game. Coase. What a pass, but just unable to make the connection there was Taylor Mason. Yeah, that was a wonderful pass. Covered about 50 to 60 yards. Mason getting significant playing time in the game against Ohio State. Is Coase one of the best passers in the conference, Kara? Certainly so. I mean, when you look at the attributes of some of the top defenders in the country and in the league, it's not just their defensive skill, but it's more importantly their ball distribution skill. And usually your best passers and your strongest passers just in ball speed and execution are going to be positioned at that center back. McKenna Grew. A lot of numbers back, but it bounces by Bond. Murphy, Holiday out to make the save on Maddie Murphy. You know, if history were to repeat itself, Holiday is going to come up with that save. Similar situation in the regular season, meaning about a minute 30 left. Maddie Murphy broke through the defense along the baseline, and Sarah Holiday came up with a huge save that may have just saved the game for Maryland. Just leaked by Hannah Bond, the wrong person, Maddie Murphy. And as a forward, you have to get behind the defense. You play for the miss. You always play for the miss. That's one of the reasons why. Stribos off the stick of Gru, back to Maryland. They'll try to counter here, leading things. Brooke to Burdine to Madison McGuire. Over to her left, there is Linnea Gonzalez. Foiled there in her attempt, the freshman Taylor Mason. But another opportunity upcoming for the Terrapins to build on this lead. Defense transitioning into offense. That's the story of that play. Lorenz comes up with a stop inside the circle and quickly Maryland just pushes the other way. Really stretching the field, Maryland is, and being able to get inside their circle and look at the jubilation coming from the Terps. They're fast, they can connect and play that one-two touch hockey up the field and it leads to a penalty corner. Trying to make this a two-goal lead for Maryland. Donrat, the inserter. Little movement up top here. Bobbled. And it just fizzles out, but Maryland will go right back at it. Average just about six a game, so almost up to that. See if they can be a little cleaner here off the corner. Same corner play. That movement, coast the shot, tipped in front. Spate and the Hawkeyes help keep it out. It was Mason who Look to have that deflection in front for Maryland. Wow, it's a heck of a save coming for the Hawkeyes. Take a look again. Mason almost had that deflected, and look at that ball just sitting right there on the baseline. Birch is there to collect it and also box out while she's getting it out of her defensive end. So Birch might have saved a goal there. She's had a couple of good defensive stands here in the second half. And when Missy Mahark said that her team may not be at its full potential, maybe even in terms to that, with finishing those plays, with finishing those what look like to be for sure goals, just putting that final touch on it. 
Instead, Iowa hanging around, just trailing by a goal. There's Bond. She learned her lesson last time. So careful with that one. Nikki Freeman behind the ball there for the Hawkeyes. Coming down to the final six minutes of regulation. So both coaches and both teams trying to figure out the right recipe late. Under six minutes to go, it's Maryland clinging to a one goal lead. Well, Lisa Salucci, Iowa's head coach, will be frustrated if the scoreline holds because Iowa, they've had the chances here in the second half. Finishing has been a huge point of emphasis for this Iowa team. And if you just take a look at where Iowa could be in this game, it's on these opportunities. On the corner, Murphy just gets down a little too low. And then on this one, Christopher just shoots it wide. And what you have to do in order to settle yourself and not let yourself get caught up in the moment. You have to take a breath right before you're about to place a move on the ball, a stick or a shot. You have to have that extra half a second just to stay calm. Not a lot of calm minds right now with under six minutes to go in a championship game. On to Nizel. Her favorite target, Stribos. Sunderland couldn't accept that pass, and it's B.B. Donrad and Maryland possessing. It's been a good tournament for Donrad. Led the offensive charge in the quarterfinals versus Michigan State, and has contributed this afternoon here against Iowa. Ellie Holly back on the field. There's Maddie Murphy trying to keep her away as Bodil Kos. She can move as well, Kos, especially when necessary there. I think her quickness has really improved over the course of one season, especially in that off-season training. McGuire pushes it away, but right back to the Hawkeyes. see Iowa really wanting to push that ball to the right side of the field. Sunderland and Birch doing a good job with holding the space in the center of the field. Murphy races to save that ball. Pushes it right into the circle. Pressure coming. Holly the drive kicked out by Holiday. Another great chance for Iowa. How about Murphy taking Lorenz 1v1? This is something you practice often throughout your weekly, daily prep, being able to pull, out, pull it off in a game and almost finding the opposite post. I mean, Holiday has just been absolutely solid in that for the Terps. Just like she was during the regular season against Iowa, Sarah Holiday proving to be a very important piece here of success for Maryland. Sarah Holiday had five saves in that October matchup. Faced six shots on net. He was able to swat away eight corners against Iowa. She's been making some big saves here down the stretch. Holly has been creating, Ellie Holly. Unable to move it into the circle. Maryland's only won this tournament once, back in 2015. And Iowa is going for it now, using the kicking back. No more goalkeeper. I was wondering if we were going to see that. Yeah, in the previous matchup this season, Iowa took a timeout around the five-minute mark and did not pull their goalkeeper. I was surprised to see that. And 
I asked Lisa Salucci why they hadn't pulled a goalkeeper, and she said they just had too much momentum with the players on the field, and she didn't think it was necessary. So this is a different prescription here. Altering the plan a little bit. Gonzalez was tackled there, number 10 for the Terrapins. And she's been thrown to the turf a couple of times coming from that physical midfield play in Iowa. Seen some frustrated Hawkeyes here. Trailing late. Gonzalez helps secure possession again for Maryland. Great positioning in that support defense. See desperate defending and also going forward with desperation. Under two minutes to go. Sunderland. Ellie Holly unable to accept that. Holly wide open on that far sideline, playing more on that right side to try to generate some attack for the Hawkeyes. Now they sense this might be their moment, Iowa. Seventy seconds to go in regulation. Been a case of missed opportunities here in the second half from the Hawkeyes. Can they find that crucial final chance to tie it? Into the circle. Manny Murphy was ready to unleash it. Maryland just in such a great mindset right now. They're playing extremely composed. They're not frazzled. They're not making any costly mistakes. You can see them taking care of the ball as well. 30 seconds left. This would be their 11th straight win over Iowa. Madison McGuire, who opened up the scoring, now trying to close out the game. Final few seconds. Maryland can breathe a little easier. Big 10 tournament champions for just the second time and the first time since 2015. Celebration on. We've talked a lot about the strength of the Big 10 this year their RPI, teams placed in the top 10, and now with a hopeful five teams possibly making the NCAA tournament. And the reason that the Big 10 has been able to become such a powerhouse really due to Maryland's joining the conference in 2014. It's elevated the game across the conference, but it also goes to show that winning the regular season and the tournament is not easily done, and it's not done very often. This is a very well-skilled team, but their season is far from over. Automatic qualification for the NCAA tournament, probable hosts, they have their eyes set on Louisville. Yeah, they have got the double, and they came so close last year, losing in the national championship game, but inspired and motivated once again as there's the McGuire sisters able to exchange hugs after that victory for Madison McGuire, who scored a big goal, propelling her team to victory. Friday, it was Maryland winning with offense, nine goals. Today, they get five big saves from Sarah Holliday, who was a huge part of their afternoon. Iowa's season is far from over. They will get an at-large into the NCAA tournament. The last time that they made the tournament was in 2012, not able to advance past the first round in a loss to UVA. 
Time to lift the trophy and celebrate. And you saw Lene Gonzalez hoisting the trophy up. This player just has such fantastic leadership skills and what she does for her team and how she carries herself on the field and off the field. Maryland has a lot of factors working for them to make a deep run. Yeah, it's been the case for Maryland. The new members of the conference, they'll make it to the championship game, but this is the second title they've ever lifted. And it wasn't an easy day to play field hockey at times with wind speeds over 20 miles per hour and heavy rain, especially here in the second half, but they fight through the conditions and now celebrate a championship. And this is a, a scary team for others to contend with in the NCAA tournament. I mean, this is a different approach too to their regular season matchup against Iowa. Maryland took care of business early in the game. They got on the board early. And also they had some pretty stellar defense when you feel the heat coming from Iowa's attack. What a season. They've raised the bar since joining the conference and what a year this has been for Big Ten field hockey overall, Kara. Yeah, absolutely. And again, with the probable chance of five teams into the NCAA tournament, that's never happened before. And this is the biggest conference in the nation that participate in the sport with nine schools. So you have over half of them qualifying for NCAA. Well, tip of the cap to Coach Missy Mahargan, her coaching staff. She's a happy head coach right now for Iowa. Better days still ahead. Their first berth in the Big Ten Championship game since 2013. They'll learn from this and live on. Once again, the final in the championship game. Maryland 2, Iowa 1. Coming up.